hello? Uh, uh, hello? Oh, oh, it's you! Cody Cryptwright. Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, oh, what? It's overdone to death? Well, then what's this? I got the okay from fucking Sheikah herself. I win. <laughs> My experience with this franchise boiled down to not knowing why it existed, and that I have this appreciation for it. Just you know, for existing. I guess I'm a fan, but more of a fan of Scott Cawthon than the internet bullshit around it. And that all starts with the Dark Age, the period of 2014 to about 2017, the FNAF plague. I think the series really became popular because of Let's Plays, you know, Markiplier and co, but mostly just him. I didn't really watch these. The thumbnails are fucking insane though. What the fuck does this mean? To be honest, I was too scared to watch a Let's Play, like Springtrap Mangle, too scary. No, I always got these two characters confused. And that made me realize that, like, switching their names still completely fixes. What, whatever. Instead of watching Let's Plays, I would watch MatPat. Nowadays, I would choose See? a Let's Play every time. Oh, man, she kind of, I ain't gonna lie, man. Chica's kind of a bad bitch now. MatPat's first theory didn't even try with the story. He just said the game was based on a real shooting that took place at Chuck E. Cheese. It, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, Matthew. I'm, I'm sure the sole survivor of that real tragedy really appreciated being compared to fucking Golden Freddy. It's gone too far this time. FNAF may tell a story of thousands of victims, but there's truly only one victim who would be affected by the game in real life, and that's MatPat. There was this fake edit going around that he named his son Fred Bear Fazington or some shit, and I immediately believed it. That that would happen. And I just want to flush you. I just want to no, flush no, you. No, and you're I tried to save you. He was constantly talking about William Afton, what's in that box, and now he thinks every human in the series is secretly a robot. But hey, to throw him a bone, the FNAF story is very contrived and basically revolves around Springtrap Afton being revived through soul shenanigans. No one's ever really gone. I think he's just milking it now. Like, bro, bro come on. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. I think Markiplier's fucking lost it. I think he just accepted into doing things like this. Oh, where did the years go? Enter random encounters. These bald spots don't lie. They've been in this game for a while. They always did these musical videos, like the famous Baldi's Basics musical. I am coming. I see you. And less famously, this Evie video where Evie is like a human woman and like, like, it's a lot of weird sexual undertones or something. I. I really, uh... So they decided to get Markiplier in on an entire series based on FNAF. Markiplier knew the streets and they knew the chemistry. I think their verse video is truly iconic. The second these puppets started singing, I, I alt tab. I always felt embarrassed watching this, as I, as I probably should, but to be fair, they actually do somewhat follow the story of the game while also being original and adding their own twist on things. Like making Balloon Boy this, making Springtrap green as fuck, and the animatronics are actually protagonists with this night guard, but... I don't really care because they still look oh weird and disgustingly long. Of course, it's not the best music, but I'm not fucking Anthony, whatever that guy's name is. I love this shit. There was, of course, really good FNAF songs made by the Living Tombstone and others. My favorite being the one that got really popular in 2020 for no reason. Those even reached the status of ruining a little kid's life. But these songs are sometimes catchy. Night 3 is pretty good just by itself. Night 1 is iconic. And Night 2. Oh my god, Night 2. Oh my. I think Markiplier is the best singer or anything, but the song they gave him is clearly the best and funniest. Just you and me, a gun or three. Markiplier singing about pumping Chica full of hot lead. It was always gonna be my favorite. Because I like it. Hell, I love it. The series has a fucking insane conclusion where they have Matt Pat show up. Don't have him sing. Instead, he says he's Scott Cawthon for some reason, and then CGI fire. Fucking Matt Pat loving father game theorist is burned alive. What were they cooking? I go by many names. Phone guy, Matt Pat, Scott Cawthon. Is one of them evil dirt bag with a chainsaw? Why yes. Actually, that one's my favorite. <laughs> We'd kind of continue, but without Markiplier or that other guy I'm not really familiar with, so. Eh, I didn't watch those. I tried watching this one, but 
I didn't like the vibes this man gave off. Good lord, what is happening in there? Nowadays, Random Encounters is basically the same. The only other thing I really want to mention is this part in like the 60 seconds of the musical where he trips and oh, that looks fucking real. Another thing I associate Marky Plarky with is the huge amount of fan games. Now, this is another Five Nights at Freddy's clone that everyone would not shut up about, much like Five Nights at Fuckboys. Yeah, I didn't really know about any of these except for One Night at Flumpty series made by Jonachrome, the creator of fucking Riddle School. I love this guy. I hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> Michael Plarty even said it, but for the time, this is probably one of the best fan games. And now it's it's probably outclassed. But does it really want to be in the FNAF fan game community? It's very um, it's very drama filled. Flumpty's was just so soulful. I love the art style and the characters. Flumpty was just some inside joke. I really like Birthday of Blam, and I really have no reason to. The rest of the characters are a little out of place, but I think that's the point. It would then get a sequel, which was a lot less a full-on copy, and had a lot of cool mechanics, like basically a health bar, and you have to stop like red man pop-ups i really like this one but sadly jonachrome got annoyed with the amount of people bothering him to make another game immediately this also happened with riddle school poor guy can't catch a break if only an event would take place that would literally force him to stay off the internet <laughs> One week at Flumpty's was gonna be a thing, but it was deleted and he instead made this video cataloging the problems with it and why he won't be making any more Flumpty's games. To be honest, I've grown really tired of the Flumpty characters. I still like them, but I just don't want to do anything else with them. They were always jokes. In my mind, they always will be jokes. And I don't want to continue to make games only about characters that didn't really have much of a serious thought process behind them. I really only learned all this like and two years ago I started getting obsessed with all his developer commentary videos. It was honestly very inspiring to me. He was very talented and I liked his characters. This was also right around the time the Fazbear Fanverse initiative happened and Jonachrome was in. One Night at Flumpty's 3 was happening and had the support of Mr. Cawthon himself and then it did. The wait wasn't very long because it was one of the first games to release. It, it was it was here. The the Fazbear Fan Bear fan game thing. It 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 did it. But I swear to God, like a week later, it happened. <laughs> Holy shit! The prophecy. I was so sad by this news, man. I love this guy. I really don't want to get into specifics or whatever. But if you want to know, I I think you should do your own research. If you want to know what happened and form your own opinion because it is a weird case of this happening and it's like i don't know it's just there's a lot of stuff involved here but no matter what jonachrome is in the wrong here i'm immensely disappointed by this but i will say i'm glad he's actually taking a break from the internet and i hope he gets the help he needs but you know i'm still sad like what are we going to tell the Riddle School fans? What we worship a talking egg for Pete's course. sake. Let's talk about FNAF parody animations. I don't care. Parody animations are my passion. There's good and there's bad ones, but no matter what, in retrospect, they're always funny. Like, Racist Mario is such a piece of shit, but also, like, the funniest thing, ironically. There's a lot to talk about this, but... I'm gonna go over the ones I remember, even though, yeah, this does exist, but <laughs> let, let's move on. Pymations, yeah! A pioneer in parody animation. <laughs> His magnum opus will always be Meet the Amazing Mercenary series, where it was a stupid TF2 bullshit thing happening and evolved into a fucking epic but he also made fnaf parodies and one of them became his most popular because they didn't care about me until i put on the mask this sadly happened to a lot of people who made just one fnaf video like garrett williamson who made like um how to make fnaf not scary <laughs> hey dude just wanted to let you know the pizza's ready i'm sorry what time and i didn't even know this was him I knew about this guy because he makes a bunch of music for fucking Scott the Watch Christmas specials and shit. There's also the story of Smike, who started a content farm using a bunch of stolen fan art as background footage. Nice! Best I've part is he didn't even play the games, but five. still felt the need to make videos like top 10 facts about Toy Chica. NF number 8 is that Toy Freddy, um, well, you know, he's kinda, um, fat. I mean, come on, you know, he's, 
come on, what can I say? He's gained a few pounds. I mean, look at him compared to the other animatronics on the show stage. He's, you know, rounder, more big boned, you know, ate a little bit too much pizza. You know what I mean? Just because it's called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza doesn't mean you gotta eat all of it, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, let's Primations get... would lead into it with a couple more animations, but he did end the series and hasn't returned since. Good for him. And uh, there's not much to actually talk about in the animations, though. I just like the voice he gave the fox. Bonnie, oh my god, I will slap you! Okay. So you're 11 years old and you see this in your recommendations. I don't know about you, but I'm clicking on that shit. And yes, in case you want to know, of course it's fucking most watched. YouTube coming in for the rescue yet again with this great feature. Calm down, son. It's just a drawing, not the real thing. This is an animation by Max G or Hot Diggity Demon who made this masterpiece. Dude, this is a fucking Mario movie that everyone's talking about. This shit sucks ass. He's also known for Brain Dump, a series that is just like one fourth of an actual review show. It's just like a bunch of like it's just a cartoon. I don't think Fazbear and Friends really stands out with jokes, but it's definitely animated well. And I like how he redesigned the characters for this kind of pyrovision joke where the characters think everything is all nice and happy and fuckable oh. or whatever. But the Night Guard's experience is like the games. That shit's scary. I think Max G was gonna draw this seed uncensored, but you know, he, he got a little hungry and accidentally drew pizzas instead. But who in their right fucking mind sits down, looks that shit up, and faps to it. That just makes me damn sick. Again, this is one of his most popular videos. The smike effect is very real and it's fucking <laughs> terrifying. At this point, the popularity of FNAF was kind of dwindling and after having it shoved in my face so many times, I became less interested in the series and I just became more annoyed that it existed. Like FNAF World, what, what the fuck? No! I couldn't even walk comfortably into a GameStop or a Hot Topic without seeing Springtrap's ugly mug. There's only one place I can go in my time of need. God damn it, everything reminds me of it! This is basically where it ends. Yeah, there's still insane FNAF shit happening, and the maniac known as MatPat is still out there. Wow, that's two references to that specific SpongeBob episode. I need it! But there's one thing stopping me from ending this. There's one man I've heard about, and I think it just needs to be said. Tony Cryptwright, FNAF Animator Supreme. But I've just heard mere tales of what he gets up to. And as of writing this, I don't, I'm not even experienced anything from him. So I thought I would stop here, do some research, and then come back and tell you what I found. So let's all gather around and give it up to the version of me who watched Tony Cryptwright. Dude. <laughs> Is that, did you watch this? At one point in time. Dude, she's the reason she's mangled. What? Is that real? <laughs> Is that official lore? People thought that, um... He was gonna be the director for the movie. <laughs> this is not it. No, people thought that the uh, Living Tombstone music videos were canon. <laughs> for some reason. Why is he an inventor? Why is he inventing? Because he actually has no other traits. They had to come up with one. Yeah, because they don't have personalities. <laughs> Well, you could come up with some for, um, Sheik, but... This guy kind of was like, Bonnie's the one that gave me nightmares, like, the the, tra the teaser trailer where he, like, pulls off his face, you know? Was that Bonnie doing that? Yeah. I thought that was Freddy. No, it's Bonnie. Bonnie? Whether Bonnie has, like, the best design of the entire, like, series. Yeah. Hey, there's bit- is there dialogue in this at all? I think the later ones, yeah. Okay, fucking good. I do not think I could get through this! No, the later ones, Springtrap is talking, yeah. Only him. No, I can't. Hey, baby, you're gonna have some of me. He's like, we're gonna fuck. <laughs> oh, I always oh. come. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best, come on. That was good. Dude, 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 dude. Who is that? Is that evil Chica? That's Burn Rap. It's Burn Trap, what? This is finally the sound effect. Finally. A little wolf flown on a green blanket. Why was your name Mangle before you got Mangled? That's not even... I know a lot of things. I feel like... Poor I feel like Tony just Poor saw the animatronic, like... Like, to. models and was like, Alright, I can make some out of this. <laughs> like, he has yeah. no idea any of the That's lore. That's like the John Schrod clip where he's like, the, the, the Game Cracker 1.0 and he just pulls out like a box with like a cigar and a fish. Yes, he's like, I, I can, can make this work. work. <laughs> when the third game came out, he was like, finally, I have them all. <laughs> he's like, what's Rick Jeffery? The only thing left to do is split up. <laughs> Freddy's here. Oh, dude, Freddy, Freddy Fazbear's Freddy office. Freddy fucker. Freddy fucker. That's dude. like angry video game married. That's what he calls him. <laughs> Freddy fucker over here. Mangle disappeared. No kidding. 
You mean after you suddenly made her name make sense? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke! That's a good joke! That is a good joke. Because I said that earlier. You finally made her name make sense. That's mean. Now that what the fuck is that in the back? <laughs> what the fuck is that? What are you doing, man? Nothing. Really I'm tired of you putting this putting this brody shit in my face. <laughs> Sorry, so what he said. I think that's it. Shut the fuck up. Was it worth it? How much views does this have? 59 mil. Okay, maybe it was worth it. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck is that fucking Riddle School character? Damn! Dude. He is amazing. He's good. I don't even give a shit. It was perfect. Everything in the last minute detail. <laughs> No, don't do it. Don't kill her. Whoa, this is awesome. I don't even care. This is cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I that you will never get your memories back, Foxy. What? I don't care. His memories? What? When I what the fuck did that happen? Know, what? Oh. Speak trap hit him so hard. And that was Tony Crypt, right? I hope that was worth it. These years were big for FNAF and also just fan content in general. Like, this is when Undertale shit was insane too, but that's its own topic. Holy fuck, comic dubs. Fan games, you know, the works. And yeah, during this time, I was sort of annoyed by this, but now I look back at all of these people fondly. Except Jonico. <laughs> I think there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot more shit in this topic, but that's the gist of it. Of course, this isn't a bygone era, we're still knee deep in this shit. They should separate times of history by pre-FNAF and post-FNAF. Well, I don't have all day, and I actually have a party to go to. <laughs> Where did my invitation come from again? Holy shit. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I like, um, I want to do a little bit more of the thing I was doing before where I cover a bunch of different topics because I feel like some people have gotten annoyed that I've, uh, covered the same topic basically in a line. I'm sorry for the people who don't like SML videos, but, uh, this, this has nothing to do with what I was just talking about, but I've, I've, I've came back with my second channel that existed for like a week before, and here it is, uh, I don't the content of this channel oh yeah content uh the the it will not change most mostly because I, I I really like just putting shit posts and seeing way too many people watch this bullshit but I just I'm I'm not gonna drown out this channel with shit like ban ban gameplay let's plays I just wasn't gonna do that but I still want to make it so I put it on the second channel and I think I want to do a lot more let's plays something maybe we'll make a fucking podcast i don't fucking know we'll do fucking anything basically so i, I just wanted to branch out and try some shit uh thanks uh see ya thanks thanks for watching